Hey guys, welcome back to the Buzz Weaver channel. And in our top stories today from the Business Recorder, Musk threatens to sue Anti-Defamation Group for falling revenue. So Musk late Monday accused the U.S.-based Jewish organization of making unfounded complaints against him and X that have scared away advertisers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, of course, as you know, here on the Buzz Weaver channel, we take the difficult, we take the complicated, we take the tumult, we take the confusion. And as you can see here, the framing of this is to make it look as though uh, Elon Musk is going after a Jewish organization when we all know that the Anti-Defamation League hide behind the virtuous position of going after anti-Semitism. But in reality, they are an agitator activist group. And they go after all platforms, not just X. So as we have covered here on the channel when it comes to the Department of Homeland Security and the Biden administration, they too put pressure on platforms to censor and silence people, even going so far as to removing a former president from the Twitter platform, as we all witness. To clear our platform's name on the matter of anti-Semitism, it looks like we have no choice but to file a defamation lawsuit against the Anti-Defamation League. Oh, the irony, Musk wrote on X on Monday. And of course, it is ironic. Based on what we've heard from advertisers, ADL seems to be responsible for most of our revenue loss, he wrote. Adding that the group would potentially be on the hook for destroying half the value of the company, so roughly $22 billion. So you see here, ladies and gentlemen. How aspects or portions of or the ilk of the establishment uniparty work by trying to silence those that uh, are in opposition of the narratives, the ideology, the philosophy, the worldviews of the left. Advertisers avoid controversy, so all that is needed for ADL to crush our U.S. and European ad revenue is to make unfounded accusations, like we've said here. When it comes to Donald Trump, it isn't about rule of law, ladies and gentlemen. It isn't about facts. It's about controlling and maintaining power. He wrote in a long thread that started with a clarification that he favors free speech but is against anti-Semitism of any kind. And unfortunately, he had to make that clarification because as this, as this article starts out, U.S.-based Jewish organization, as though he were going after a Jewish organization in what would be, I guess, some play on words of being anti-Semitic himself. So obviously we can see the play here, which is why you come to the Buzzweaver channel so we can clarify all this. And here's what he's saying here. To be super clear, I'm pro-free spe oh, pro speech, but against anti-Semitism of any kind. Very straightforward and understandable. And then Mike Cernovich says, it's been proven that Democrat groups buy bots to falsely smear people via association. How many anti-Semitic accounts are real versus how many are funded? operated by the DNC to create fear and division. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have already covered here on the Buzzweaver channel about the Department of Homeland Security, as well as the administration, putting pressure on platforms to censor, to ban, to remove people's speech online. Although, yes, these are private companies and they can monitor uh, what people are saying, but these, but these companies, these platforms also provide people with the ability to block content off of their platform off of their account if they don't want to see uh, uh, information or they don't want people to jump on their accounts and muck up their account right so there's tools out there but nonetheless what they do is of course they do have bots i have been botted my own self that uh, uh with um it was uh antifa a couple years ago uh botted botted my twitter account here and like i was getting notifications every five minutes for uh, up to 20 notifications every five minutes for hours. It was just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and Elon goes on to say, it is impossible to tell with verification. It is impossible to tell with unverified accounts whether you're dealing with a small or a large number of real people as sophisticated bots are virtually indistinguishable from humans. With unverified accounts, there is also no way to tell if the organization complaining was, and I should have clicked more on my apologies, somehow complicit in creating the very thing they complain about. Now, it is not unusual for activists to generate uh, outrage themselves because, as you know, in life sometimes things can be very boring. And when you're out with a camera, for example, when you're a creator or, or, or a producer or others, you have to kind of create things to happen. In other words, uh, you got to kind of have to fudge things around and kind of uh, organize and orchestrate things a bit 
to have things play out the way you want them to, to get that outrage that you're looking for, to get that subject matter that you're looking for. So it's, it's not unusual for activist groups, especially the left, to generate their own outrage by pretending to be something they aren't or to uh, pretend as though there is an outrage going on when it is just a bot account uh, that's actually creating the outrage. Now, it is interesting here from the Jewish News of Northern California Back uh, in May of tw- of 2000, well, we're going way back 23 years, judge fined, a judge fined the ADL $10.5 million in a Colorado defamation suit. Now, it doesn't say fined. I put that in there just to, to illustrate to you that the Anti-Defamation League has been sued before. And in this case, it was a, a civil lawsuit that began with a neighbor's dispute over garden plants and fighting dogs. It ended up in a judgment against the Denver-based chapter of the Anti-Defamation League or as I like to call them, the Activist Defame League. And so it's just uh, extraordinary that, uh, that, that that Musk has to go to these links because as we know, we've talked about it here many times when it comes to the DHS and the ad- ad administration, they go after platforms, and they're going to continue to do this as we see the slow crawl, slow movement of mask mandates trying to return and maybe even going so far as lockdowns as we have also covered here on the channel. But nonetheless, guys, I want to thank all of you for your continued support, especially all you guys across New Tech, as well as you guys here on YouTube. Of course, they're appearing on the screen. That would be the channel icon you guys can click on to subscribe, as well as to select notifications. That way you know when there's content here on the channel. And I'll see all you guys in the next video.